The Oregon District, Dayton's first district, which was settled in 1829, started out as a merchant and artisan district. After the Civil War, there was a large influx of people to the area. In 1913, the Great Flood of Dayton came through the district and caused many residents to leave the area. In 1965, a small group of privately funded Daytonians formed an alliance to have the Oregon District saved, restored, and to remake the first community of Dayton, Ohio. Together with the failed plans of Bertrand Goldberg Associates and the community of the Oregon District, this small group of Daytonians were able to beat urban renewal. After the natural disaster and the urban renewal era, the Oregon District in Dayton, Ohio is one of the few districts that has survived through urban renewal. Today the Oregon District is known as a historic district and it would not have ended up like that without the help from the residing community. The rejection of the Bertrand Goldberg Associates urban renewal plan in the Oregon District demonstrates the social and cultural significance of urban renewal nationally because it showed the power of opponents to mobilize against land reduction using the logic of historic preservation. In this short film, I will show the details of the urban renewal project, the Oregon Historic District in the city of Dayton, Ohio, in order to shed light on the impact of the citizens of the Oregon District and their fight for their community against urban renewal. This little known history of urban planning is relevant today because it shows the impact that a community can have on government projects. The Oregon District is not the only place that you will find communities fighting against urban renewal policies and plans. Across the nation, people have been standing up for their cities, their districts, and standing up for what they believe in. For example, New York City has a few cases of people standing up against urban renewal, those cases being West Greenwich Village and the Pennsylvania Station. Both of these incidents led to the community reactions against urban renewal, but through different means. In the 1960s, the Pennsylvania Station was scheduled to be torn down. The station was being demolished because the owners of the station were offered a partial stake in the Madison Square Garden complex that was going to be built right on top of the demolished station. Another reason for wanting to demolish the station was because an interest in rail travel was decreasing and it would be more economical of the building owners to build a smaller station. After local residents heard of this plan, several of them organized protests, groups, and a letter writing campaign. Ultimately, the Pennsylvania Station was demolished, even though the community had put up a good fight. A different outcome was that of West Greenwich Village. West Greenwich Village had been going through urban renewal policy since the 1940s, and as Robert Moses planned to pursue several urban renewal projects, a local resident of the area, an activist and author, Jane Jacobs, was there to stand up for her neighborhood and others like it from slum clearance. The village was ultimately saved from urban renewal thanks to Jacobs and the community's response to her actions. While both of these cases had different beginnings and endings, they were able to spark a community reaction. A reaction that would ultimately lead to standing up against urban renewal plans, projects, and policies, just like in the Oregon District. As urban blight was becoming more unbearable on the city of Dayton, the city plan board considered slum clearance as an option for these problems. The board broke up Dayton into two projects, Project 1 being West Dayton, which was scheduled to begin in 1958, and Project 2 being East Dayton, which was scheduled to begin a year earlier in 1957. However, the city plan board's ambitions got the better of them, as it took roughly nine years for the board to get around to East Dayton. I believe this long period in between Dayton scheduling urban renewal plans to when anything actually happened allowed Oregonians to see what was going on outside of their district in terms of urban renewal and they saw that they did not like what was happening. In June of 1966, as the planning board turned its sights on restoring the east side of Dayton, they hired a Chicago-based firm by the name of Bertrand Goldberg Associates to do a site plan and economic feasibility study. These were their plans for the district. After reviewing the areas, the firm recommended that 125 buildings and structures be saved and the rest to be raised and torn down. It was a three-phase plan for East Dayton and in the absence of the race structures, they had planned to build three apartment high-rises, 50 arts and craft shops, recreation areas, and underground parking areas. This redevelopment plan was estimated to cost $22 million. However, their plan fell through due to a lack of funding and heavy community opposition from a small group of Daytonians. After their plan fell through, this reaffirmed the belief that other citizens had about the inexpressible value of the district. 
So more of the locals began to mobilize to defend the district with the group of Daytonians on their beliefs that the Oregon district area had these sorts of indefinable values and characteristics. As more and more residents began taking up arms against urban renewal plans, the idea to turn this sector of Dayton into a historic district became a more concrete plan. So on August 20th of 1972, the city of Dayton, with the help of Dayton citizens, created the Burns-Jackson Historic District to preserve the district and all of its history and culture. After the name change to the Oregon Historic District in 1974, the district was added to the National Register of Historic Places. After eight years of fighting and working to ensure the life of their district, the citizens had succeeded. The community of the Oregon District had beaten urban renewal. The Bertrand Goldberg plan died due to a lack of funding and opposition from a small group of Daytonians. Urban renewal in the Oregon district died from strong community opposition and the district being turned into a historical area. If the small group of Daytonians that banded together in 1965 had not came together to save the district, and if the Chicago-based firm Bertrand Goldberg Associates had more money to ensure that their urban renewal plan could be seen to completion, the Oregon Historic District that we know today would have been raised, restored, and turned into housing, shopping, and parking. The culture of the district would have been lost. Citizens would not have fully realized the value of the district and to assemble to oppose urban redevelopment within the district. Without those Daytonians rising up and the shortfall of funding, the history, culture, architecture, etc. of the area would be lost and the Oregon District would have died in the late 1960s. The residents of the Oregon District were extremely fortunate that people came together to protect and fight for the district and that the firm the city did not have the finances to complete this project. The Oregon Historic District, a district of approximately 20,000 people, free of urban renewal, is now a spot for people to admire the history and cultural aspects of the architecture of the district. Tourists and locals alike can also visit the new Confounders Park that was constructed in 1985. Along with the historical elements of the district, there are numerous other places that people visit within the district, namely shopping, entertainment, dining, and bars and night spots. Thusly, the Oregon Historic District has been called an entertainment district. A lot of the district has focused on commercial aspects of the area. Of course, there are community efforts to keep the area clean and presentable, but there is not very many programs or events that take place to commemorate and look back on the history of the Oregon Historic District and the efforts that the community went through. One of the few notable events that takes place annually in the Oregon District is the Holiday Candlelight Tour. This tour explores the historic homes of the district that have been decorated for the holidays. There are similar annual events that happen and they generally give tours on something historical in the district. For instance, the annual Solstice Garden Tour explores how much gardening can be done with the limited space offered by the urban setting of the district. These gardens are generally alongside and behind the historic homes of the district. While I believe that businesses are important to the growth of this sector of Dayton, I also believe that more can be done to shed light on what was done in the 60s and the early 70s to ensure that the district could become what it is today and showcase all the historic buildings. All these events are hosted by the Oregon Historic District and I would personally like to see more done for the community by other businesses and residents. <laughs>